We shouldn't tell ourselves not to want. We should just learn what does it look like to want well. Annie F. Downs, you are here. If when you get the thing that is glaringly in front of you that you want, it is not long until there's something else you I want. always say the finish line always moves. Money was just confusing. I knew it had to be a better way. The choice was between do I eat, do I feed the dog? When you first start to budget, it feels like you got a raise. Everything has changed. Everything is completely different now. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rachel Cruz Show podcast. I am so glad that you're here and that we get to hang out and talk about the subject in life that can be stressful for some people, but we're here to make it fun and exciting. And that topic is money. So today's episode is going to be all about how to give yourself a raise. And I'm really excited about it because this is not you like walking into your boss's office and you're like, hey, can I make more money? This is creative things that you may not think about, but ways to put money back in your pockets. But here's the deal. When it comes to personal finance, we always teach you at Ramsey Solutions that it is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. So the behavior piece of your money is crucial in order to win you have to go out and change your behavior, change your habits to habits that are going to allow you to succeed with your money. Things like budgeting, living without debt, saving for the future, all of those things. But we don't want to completely dismiss the 20% head knowledge, okay? That's important. It's important to understand how money works. And some of these topics when it comes to money can be really intimidating. Things like investing. I would put taxes in this bucket as well, okay? Taxes can be intimidating and they're confusing because you hear all these terms of like withholdings, deductions, dependents. It's like all these terms you are like, what is going on? But listen, this is one subject. If you can grasp it and you can do it right, you can actually put money back in your pocket. So the first way to give yourself a raise is not to get a tax refund. That's right. I said it. Uh Uh-huh. Tax refunds are so funny to me, the way people approach them, because it's like you get this check in the mail, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Look, it's hundreds of dollars. Some of you, it's thousands of dollars. You're like, babe, let's go on vacation with this money. Let's go out to dinner. I can go shopping. And you act like it's free money. You guys, you know this. You worked hard for that money. Like, you sat in traffic. You dealt with jerky bosses. Like, you did a lot to earn that money. And that money that is now a check in your hand was supposed to be in your hand all year long. But was it? Nope. Sitting there in Washington, D.C., Uncle Sam was holding on to that check and your money when your check, when that money could have been in your hand working for you, whether that's helping pay off debt, whether that's investing. And so it drives me crazy when people are so excited to get a tax refund because what I think is, no, 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 no. That money could have been working for you all year long. So what you have to understand are there are two camps of people when it comes to taxes. Some of you, your taxes are pretty simple, right? You're single, you're renting, you have one source of income, you don't have kids. Like, it's a pretty simple life. And I say that, like— We all have, like, tons of stuff going on in our lives. I'm not simplifying your life. I mean, you have a simple, quote-unquote, lifestyle, which allows your taxes to be simple. So if that's you, if you're in that camp, you could file your own taxes and probably do a pretty good job of it. Now, if that's not you, if you own a home, if you have a side business, if you have multiple sources of income, if you have kids, if you're married, if you have all these other things— that affect your taxes, I really would encourage you to get a tax professional, okay? This is someone who lives and breathes this stuff on a daily basis. Like, while you and I probably hate taxes, these people, like, love diving into the numbers and figuring all this stuff out. So I'm like, okay, so let someone who's really good at it do it well. Because, again, the goal is that you don't owe any taxes at the end of the year and that you don't get a huge refund, that your money that is supposed to be yours is in your pocket all year long, which means more money in your budget monthly. And that's going to be the key. That could possibly give you a huge raise month to month. Now, if you don't know if you need a tax professional, click the link in the show notes because we have a great quiz out there and you can take that to figure out, okay, do I need a tax professional? And if you do, then you can check out our tax ELPs, our endorsed local providers, and they are fantastic. These are people we recommend to help in this area. So, We got the boring stuff out of the way, guys. (laughs) The taxes, oh my gosh. It can be so boring. But listen, a little bit of knowledge goes a really long way with your money. All right, coming up next, another way 
to give yourself a raise is to learn to be content. That's right. Where you're not out spending tons of money thinking that stuff is going to make you happy, but you really are settled and at peace with where you are. And one of my favorite people in the world is going to help us talk about this. My friend and author and speaker, Annie F. Downs, is on the show. And I'm so excited, you guys. She, on a personal note, is like, has become one of my best friends. Like, I so enjoy Annie. She actually comes to our house once a month on a Wednesday night, and we call it Wind Down Winston Wednesdays for my husband, Winston. And she plays with our girls, and we are we, we stay up way too late just chatting and stuff, and she's just become a really dear friend. But she's so wise. She has so many great perspectives in life. And so the fact that she's on my show, I'm just really pumped about. And I'm glad you guys get to hear from her. So here is the conversation I had with Annie around contentment. Well, I am beyond thrilled right now because Annie F. Downs, you are here. I'm here. We're You're... together. Okay, so Annie is a speaker and an author and just and actually a, a friend, a real-life friend of mine. But for people that don't know you, sure. Annie, like, what do you do? Like, who are you? Yeah. So there are three main things I do. We've Okay, we've, can I totally interrupt it? Yes. I think it's the main things. Do you remember when my husband, Winston, like, when, I, when we first became friends, remember yes. Winston kept being like, who is Annie? Yeah. He, <laughs> he's like, after he came to my birthday party. That is true. Then he was, he was like, like who, who, is, is she? who is she? Who is she? What so, does she do? So if someone is Winston, they're like, who is she? <laughs> I like her, but what is that thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? So, I mean, you know what a fun thing is? I, I feel like the longer you do a job, and you're doing this too, it's one of my favorite things about us working alongside each other in a lot of ways is I'm watching you do it too, is that you really learn your lane and learn what you're really good at and what your purpose on the planet is. Yes. Right? So I feel like over the last few years, that has refined and refined and refined for me. And now there's like three main areas that we focus on. I always use we. I don't know. I, me. My team. My team. <laughs> yeah. We. Well, it takes a, it's a, a village. There's yeah, a village. There's a lot of us. No, I can't just be left in control of this by myself. <laughs> Amen. Train wreck. Amen. Sister. Um, writing books is one part of it because I just, yeah. I, what I want to do with my life is communicate who God is through my story. And so sometimes that comes out in book form, and sometimes that's in the podcast form, and sometimes that's speaking on stages. There's, you know, my pastor just taught about this a couple of days ago, but taught about your spiritual gifts and, like, why you're on the planet. And, yes. And, our, and the joy you find. He, he was saying, you know, so many people feel selfish when they found the thing they're really mm. good at because they go, I didn't know it was supposed to feel good. I thought if I was doing good for the planet, it would feel like I was sacrificing or it would feel hard. And and there are pieces of that, right? Sure, but sure. there's also this like, man, is this supposed to be this much fun? Yes. Is this supposed to? And I, you know my life very well. I cry a lot. Things go wrong a lot. This isn't, a, it's not a perfect existence yeah. by any stretch, but there is this like, Man, who knew work could be this fun? I love it. Yeah, and your books are just phenomenal. You just Thanks. had one released earlier last yeah. last year. Yeah, Remember God. Of, yeah. Remember and God. just fantastic. And your Thank podcast, you. that sounds fun. Oh, my gosh. You and Winston are still one of the best episodes. No. People love— Oh, my gosh. Our, like, top five of 180 yes. or something. Yeah, people love it. It's the only it. thing, Winston, if you want to hear Winston Cruz, <laughs> it won't be on my show, but it'll be on Annie's podcast— <laughs> Go. It it's, was so good. And your podcast, honestly, for my for my audience, we surveyed their favorite podcast. Yeah. And yours was number one. Oh, you yes. And so a lot of you guys listen already friends. to that. Sounds fun. I and love so, it so much. Yeah. So when Winston and I were on your podcast, we were talking about every dollar. Yes, because I used it. Did you use it? And I was able to buy a condo <laughs> because I used every dollar. For real. I would never lie about this. It is a, it's the best, yes. and I like it. So what did you really do? Helps. You saved money every month. Like, yeah. what was your goals? Yeah. So, so talk my to me about this. so I, my goal was to save my down payment. Yes. And and so I didn't work. I didn't even look for a condo until I got half of it. Yes. And then once I had half my down payment, then I started looking because I knew that once I started looking, that I had a little more time. Yep. And then it did end up happening a little fast, so I had to readjust some things. Yes. But it's been really helpful. Now that now that my house is there, I need to redo some of the saving. You may need to help me because I need to redo so I can decorate. You need to come back on and let's okay. do a budget makeover. Oh for yeah. Any oh, I would. Yes, I need it. I need it. Let's okay. do it. So it's, then I can buy what happen. I need for my house. I can like do some things. Be grateful and content all yes, at the same that's time. That's right. That's right. And have a cute house. All the things. Very important. So we're in February now. Yeah. And the stats are that 80% of people give up on their New Year's resolutions in February. That's awful. <laughs> yeah, that's know. so sad. So I think and kind of what we're talking about a little bit, like with like not, if you're not satisfied of where you are in life, whether yeah. your job or not, like what do you do? 
where do you find contentment? Where do you find joy when yeah. life doesn't turn out the way you thought, right? Yeah. Like it's February and you probably thought, oh, this is going to be a new year. And you're like, yeah. you know, two months in already. And you're like, all right, it sucks <laughs> just like it did last year or whatever. Right. Like, it's like, how do you find contentment and joy when things are not going? And do you know, I don't know that you and I have ever talked about this, but do you know I don't do New Year's um, re- resolutions? Don't. I do New Year's experiments. Oh, I thought you were saying New Year's goals. No, like, no, no. No, that's so boring. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Why would I ever be I, that boring? I, that would be me. That Jeez, would be me. That's not, not an Enneagram you. 7. Yeah, no. Okay, guys, I'm going to pause right there because she said, I'm an Enneagram 7. That's so not an Enneagram 7 thing to do. And in my world, I'm like, oh, everyone knows what the Enneagram is. And then I was speaking last two weekends ago in Dallas, and I had a group of about 100 people I was talking to at this backstage experience thing, and I mentioned the Enneagram, and they all looked at me like I was crazy. And I asked, I was like, wait, how many of you have heard of the Enneagram? And only three of them raised their hands. So I'm going to just assume like 95% of you listening to this don't know what the Enneagram is. So real quickly, so the Enneagram, it's not a personality test. It's not like Myers-Briggs or DISC. It takes this combination of like your nature and your nurture, and you understand basically why you are the way you are and like why you function in situations the way you do. And it is fascinating. Like, I wish I was like a spokesman for the Enneagram. You guys, it is so crazy and it's so accurate. I mean, it just like you read it and you it like blows your mind. So there's nine numbers. Annie's a seven. If you know the Enneagram, you'll appreciate that. I'm a three on the Enneagram. And so, yeah, it's just, it's it's such a crazy thing. So you need to Google it if you have it. It's E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M and you're welcome. Your life has been changed because of me on hopefully your money side of your life and your Enneagram side. So enjoy that. I, um, I do New Year's experiments. And what, so what I say is if I did this for a whole year, what would be different? And it is really hard to quit an experiment. Yeah. It's a lot easier to quit a resolution because you're like, I'm going to do this. No, I'm not. If you say to yourself, I went, so this year I'm eating two handfuls of spinach every morning. That's my only resolution. (laughs) Two (laughs) handfuls of raw spinach every morning. Why? Or like, what, what have you heard? I, there, I need more iron okay. in my body, and I just need more green, and I'm not finding an easy way to eat it for breakfast. And so, you're just and so if it. I can just do eat two little handfuls of spinach every morning. So the question is, I'm not thrilled about it, yeah, I know, but the question like, is, how exciting. different would my life be at the yeah. end of the year? Will it be different or not? I don't yes. know. Yes. But because it's an experiment, yeah. I'm not willing to quit on it. It's good. You know? So, so that's one part of that. Yeah. Um, the other part is we are never, this is, I'm sorry to bring this news to you on in a February day. We are just <laughs> never going to have everything we want. Yep. And that is just true. You want, but, and we know that's true even today because you ate breakfast and then you wanted lunch, right? Like you and me, you had food and then you wanted food again. That yep. is, that is how we are always going to live. When you get the thing that is glaringly in front of you that you want, it is not long until there's something else you I always say the finish line always moves. It always moves. And that's it. And that's true even with salaries. I know I've talked about this, but there was a study done, which I think is so fascinating. Yeah. And they talked to people that made $100,000 a year. Yeah. They said, is that enough? Like, do you feel rich? And they're like, no. They're like, well, how much would you need? 200000 Yeah. They went to someone that made 200000 Do you feel rich? No. How much would you need? 500000 And right. it's like, once you get there, but it, it's, you're right. It keeps moving. It just keeps yeah. moving. So, good. And so with things like what you say in, at the beginning of the new year, a, I would have, I would say you can just start over today. Just like tell yourself, like, who yep. do I want to be at the end of the year? Yep. And what would it take to be that, right? Mm-hmm. But also it's like it is okay for you to not be content with this, and it is okay for you to be content with this. Mm-hmm. I part of my personality type, you know this really well about me, but part of my personality type is that um, I'm not ever really super content in that I can always think of something else I'd, I want to do. And I can always think of another job I would do. And I can always think of another restaurant I want to try. Or another, like when I look at a menu, I go like, oh, oh no, I, all. Can I try all? <laughs> yes. You know? Or when you're on vacation, you're planning your next one. Oh, right. That's like what I do. I'm totally. Like, Where could we go after this? Yeah, yeah totally. I'm that I way too. And so, and I felt for a long time really... Um, A lot of shame about that. Yes. And what's actually true is we shouldn't tell ourselves not to want. We should just learn what does it look like to want well? Mm -hmm. How do you want things that you don't have without making them an idol? And how do you find contentment, even if you haven't been who you always wanted to be, and even if you've stopped your New Year's resolution, and you need to have a list of here are some things I want that I don't have, and there are people on the planet who know that. And here are the things I have I do not deserve, and I am thankful for those. I think making yourself only choose one of those lists— will make for a really 
a more painful life. I think that's so true. And I've never thought about that before, but holding both. Cause like we talk about oh, gratitude both. a lot, yeah. right? Cause gratitude leads to contentment. So those things that you are, you're so grateful for, but there are going to be the things that you're like, I'm not okay with. That. I want something yes. different. And yes. sometimes that's good. Cause yeah. that stretches you. That lets you find that goal that you're like, okay, yeah. I want to reach for that. Or here's something I'm going to pray about. And it's like, God, I, you have to show up in this. That's right? right. And that's so totally having both, it. but so how do you think you got there? Because there's a lot of people that have jobs, right? And they're in a career. They're mm-hmm. in this, like, state of mind, this life cycle. And they're not having fun. Like, they're yeah. in this moment of, like, maybe it's their job. So, like, like, how did you find your lane? Yes, yeah, so I think one of the big things is recognizing that you probably have one central calling. And it's been expressed in a lot of different ways. Yeah. Almost like a, a five-paragraph essay where there's a thesis and there's all there's three points to your thesis. It, if, if you can back up, our friends who are with us that are saying like, man, my job is not working for me. Yep. But here are the four things that make me feel really alive at my job. And then here are the other things. In fact, all my jobs kind of have this one central, oh, oh, I really like to help people. Interesting, yep. yep. You know, and then you go, okay, what's a different, is there a different career where I could still express my calling that looks different than this? Because, you know, I used to teach elementary school. Yes, yes. And it is literally the same gift. I entertain people long enough that they learn something. I just did it with fourth <laughs> graders, and now I do it on Sunday mornings so at churches good. or so at good. conferences or in books. Yep, yep. Right? But I, so I think how I found it is I laid out my whole life in front of me literally on note cards, and I went like, Oh my gosh, I like entertaining people, mm. but I all it, it, but I it can't be purposeless. I don't want to just be funny without purpose. I want it to be f- fun and funny with a purpose. Yes. Oh, that's my calling. I entertain people long enough that they learn something. And you took the time and the intentionality to put you it on to. note cards. You yeah. said do it, and that's the yeah. thing. I mean, like it's true with your money, it's true with your career, your family, your friendships, all the above. You have to be intentional. What is the thing you say about debt it, or about budgeting? It doesn't tell you how you can't spend your money. It tells you how you yes. can. Yes, a budget doesn't limit your freedom. It gives you freedom. Thank you. Praises. That's, that's it. Praise but, and that's the same. That is the same when you're figuring out your calling. Yep. It yep. isn't going to limit you to look at your life. It's going to actually expand. And you go, oh, my gosh, I never thought about being a nurse. But look at all the ways I've helped people. Yep. I, and I want to do something that matters. I could be a nurse. And all of a sudden— your path makes sense. And it, so does, it also doesn't limit you to feeling like you're supposed to have one career in this life and stay in it for 40 and that's years. It. Totally, yeah, you, totally. Don't. You do it have one calling. Close. I think yep. you do have one calling. I just think there are a lot of expressions of it. Yes. So in the disappointment camp, I think yeah. some people watching who know you, yeah. and they're like, oh, she has this podcast and books. Or some people may you know, look at me and think, oh, she has this great show. But yeah. there's disappointments in life. And that happens for everyone. Yeah. And I think it's just interesting to hear people's Yeah, I mean, I think it's as easy as... Um, when I don't get the flight home that I want to get home yes. and I miss out on a wedding or a dinner or whatever and I get frustrated and I'm disappointed yep. that that didn't happen. It's going on a first date that doesn't lead to a second date. Yep. And because I'm a futurist and because I'm a little uh, forward thinking and I get excited real easily, yep. I go like, oh, I thought I could have seen Christmas. Like I could have seen this working even though, you know. Yes, yes, So there's yes. disappointment. That happens every now and again. Yep. Um I get disappointed when I don't do for myself what I know is right for myself health wise or mm-hmm. you know when I waste a day and don't yep. eat the way I should or where I don't exercise like I should I get disappointed in myself so yep. yeah I mean yep. it happens yeah how book sales go are great but they may not always meet some expectation that you've set totally and so totally. work stuff can always like Yep. You know, you you set out books after you've been speaking and you bring 195 of them sell and you go, oh, I didn't hundred sell. You yeah, know, and yeah. you, four or five sell. Right, right. <laughs> you take ninety five home with you. Right. I mean, listen, <laughs> that's happened. That's too. happened. Let me tell you about yes. a heavy suitcase. Is the one that's, <laughs> that's full right. of books you're bringing that's back right. home. Totally. So totally. yeah, I mean, and I think the thing we have to learn to do that I'm working really hard on because, mm-hmm. as in Enneagram language, as a seven, I want to reframe everything positively. Yes. And so I have to work to go like, man, this didn't work, and that is okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so for some of these things, it's me just saying out loud to my people, this didn't work, and man, that's not okay with me. Mm-hmm. I hate how that went down. Yep. This should have been And kind of owning different. it and yeah. saying it out loud because that's, yeah. yeah, I think that's so yeah, good. Yeah, and I just think for, it makes, what I've seen in my life, so I can't speak for anybody else, what I've seen in my life is that owning my wants and owning my disappointments and owning my joys has made me more connected with me. 
Mm-hmm. I've become a more unified Annie. And and I've I walk more fully in who I am because I hold all those things instead of going like, I don't want anything. I'm not disappointed. I'm just having fun. You know, it's just yep. like inside out. It's just like inside out. Yes. I was yes. only letting joy run everything. Joy. All, all it's the, the best. Time. It's yes. the best movie. Yes. I watched that movie and just cried because I was like, that is my whole life. <laughs> I just want sadness to shut up and go away. Get and out have of here. no power. <laughs> yeah. But the but you are a fuller person when all those things coexist. And one of the most, like, one of the things I love, love about you, and out of all my friends, you're probably, like, the highest on the list for this, Mm. is you dig into yourself and who you are. Like, you've done so much work. And even, like, the past, like, few years I've known you, even the last, like, I'd say 12 months even. Yeah, yeah. Like, understanding who you are. And for you, that's, you know, probably that's been counseling. And, like, the Enneagram, we keep throwing out the Enneagram. If you've not done the Enneagram. Oh, you need to know. Praise Jesus, hallelujah. The Enneagram. E-N-N-E-A. E-A. Graham. Graham. G-R-A-M. So many people on my Instagram think I'm saying Annie Graham. And I'm like, (laughs) I wish. I wish I owned that. I wish I got to make a scale about who people were. I'm like, you're a 10. You're a 10 on the Annie Graham. You're fine. That's right. But I think understanding who you are on a deeper level than just surface, which can be painful and Mm -hmm. not fun. But when you understand your wants and desires, you're able to, in a very healthy way, just like you were saying, I love the two pictures of having that gratitude. And then mm-hmm. having the discontentment of sometimes it's a good thing because it pushes yeah. you to what you want or has you trust, yeah. you know, in the future in that sense. All that is so good. And I can have an I can have a bent toward caring too much about myself. And so luckily I have people in my life that remind me that we the reason we do all that work on ourselves is to be better for others. I love it. Love, love it. Okay, so where can everyone find you? Oh, I'm embarrassingly easy to find. <laughs> um, so Annie F. Downs everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I love it. So good. Yeah. Oh, love thanks, you. Annie. I love, love your show. show. Thanks. Thanks Glad for to being be here. on here. Seriously. Thanks, everyone. Check out everything she's doing. Buy the books, listen to the podcast, follow her on social. She's awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Annie. Is she not just so great? Oh, Annie. It's funny. Her, like, like her real name is Annie Downs, obviously, but... There was another Annie Downs who did quilting or something and had that Instagram, so she had to put the F in there. So Annie F. Downs, that's why I kept calling her Annie F. Downs. Uh, but she's Annie, and she's just, she's so great. And it re- that whole conversation reminded me, I heard a quote recently that I've just, like, been thinking about. But the person said, self-awareness equals success. And when you're self-aware, like, you understand why you interact with people the way you do. You start to understand why do you interact with money the way you do. Like, when you just know yourself more, uh, not only can you work on that and become a whole healthier person, but I think it just, like, opens your eyes to your relationships and how you do life. And I think it's just really important. And part of that obviously weaves in with that contentment message of knowing where you're at in life and that balance of being at peace with that, but also knowing that contentment does not mean apathy. It does not mean laziness. You can still be striving for more while still having that peace. And it's a hard balance. Like, we don't get it perfect, but I think it is crucial to the money side of our lives because, again, when you are content, you're able to save more. When you are content, you're able to sacrifice your lifestyle and get out of debt. When you're content, you're able to give more. Like, there's just so much of that emotion that relays into the money side of your life that's really important. And ultimately, it gives you a raise because you're not spending your money on a bunch of crap you think is going to make you happy, (laughs) even though stuff is fun. We love stuff. Remember the quote we always say around here, it's okay to have some nice stuff. Just don't let your nice stuff have you. Now, coming up next is another way for you to give yourself a raise and probably the most effective, probably the most tactical of the show today, but that is budgeting. That's right. When you budget and you are intentional with your money, automatically you're going to feel like you got a raise. And so coming up next is a guest I had on. Her name is Tracy White, and she is phenomenal, you guys. She has been walking this debt-free journey. She's in the middle of getting out of debt, and her story is just so encouraging. It really is. I love hearing people from different walks of life, different seasons of life, different income levels, different debt levels, all the above. But no matter who you are, and Tracy's a testament to this, you can start budgeting and you can start working your way out of debt. So here is Tracy's story. Money was just confusing. I didn't know really how to make ends meet that I had created for myself. I knew it had to be a better way. I would go to work every day and I would get paid on every other Friday and it just, it wasn't enough. And that was just the biggest thing for me. I knew that there was 
some way that I could enjoy my life better than just going to work every day. And so when I came across Financial Peace University, it was the first time money had ever made sense to me. My life started to open up, but I definitely had to work hard to get to that place. And just doing the steps, no matter how hard they were, Finding an accountability partner, he forced me to get a second job. You have to have another job, Tracy. You're $10 away from disaster. And it was true. But I feel like once you get it, the budgeting piece of it, you find money. This is the first time I knew what to do with the finances. And everything has changed. Everything is completely different now. Well, Tracy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, and sharing your story because this whole episode is about how to get a raise. Yeah. And we say around here all the time that when you first start to budget, mm -hmm. it feels like you got a raise. Yes. So I want to know from you, because you're a budgeter now, which we'll talk about <laughs> in a second, but what was life like before you started budgeting? I was just confused all the time. Mm -hmm. I would work Monday through Friday, every other Friday, get a paycheck, and it just would be gone by Friday afternoon, and I just didn't know where it went, or I just didn't feel totally good about my life. I just felt like there had to be something else. It had to be a, a little bit more. Yes. Were you stressed a lot, do you feel Always. Like? Mm -hmm. Always trying to figure out. There were so many days the choice was between, do I eat, do I feed the dog? Oh, oh wow, yeah. do we pay the utility bill, or do we go put gas in the car? There were always trying to choose one over the other. Yeah, and that's like your basic needs there, yeah, right? Exactly. That, yeah, you had. Yeah. And and so, I mean, I guess I could put you in that percentage that 78% of Americans live yes. paycheck to paycheck. Absolutely. So you are the true, true. tried and true living <laughs> paycheck. Did you ever think when you're in that, like the thought of not being like that, did you think that was possible? Or was it like all those people can do it, but like there's just, there's no way that my situation can change because it felt so in the moment, so stressful? It definitely felt suffocating for sure. But because I worked in the medical field, I knew that was a cure. <laughs> I just didn't <laughs> yes. know what the cure was. I just knew there had to be a better way mm. because I would see the people who were not living paycheck to paycheck, and that was my true inspiration. So what was the moment that you're like, okay, I got to change, and what, what got you on a different path? I started... You know, I, I always say YouTube is the new Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> so I just started researching and researching and researching, and I had come across the Dave Ramsey show, and mm -hmm. I found the Rachel Cruz show <laughs> on YouTube, and I just started watching it. And I moved to Nashville, and the first year I moved here, I was so excited when I realized I was actually in Nashville and that the studio that I had been watching on YouTube was in yeah. Brentwood. So a friend and I went on my birthday um, two years ago, and we got to see See the studio. I got my picture taken with Dave Ramsey and Anthony O'Neill, and I got a quick shot of you leaving out of the studio oh, that day. Right yeah. <laughs> at the studio that day, and I just thought, I'm going to mm. change my life. I had the visual now. I had the vision board photo of standing next to Dave Ramsey. I'm like, oh, I can do this. I'm too close now. And it took four paychecks, and that's kind of where I always get breakdown in my story yeah. because it took four paychecks for me to save the $100 to go to Financial Peace University. And it was the best <laughs> four paychecks I've ever had to spend on that. And that's when my life began to change. I went every Sunday morning. I did not miss a session. And all the pieces fell together then. Okay, I want to interrupt right there. Because if you back up a few minutes, she said, that's the day I decided to change my life. I had a picture of me and Dave Ramsey on my vision board. I went to Financial Peace University, and I didn't miss a class for nine weeks. And then all the pieces fell into place. And I want to be like, Tracy, girl, the no, the pieces didn't just fall into place. You moved the pieces. Like, you were the one that decided, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to do something different. And so, guys— Winning with money doesn't happen by accident. Like, it's not going to just happen. You're not going to look in your bank account one day and be like, oh, wow, there's $5,000 just sitting there. That's pretty cool. Like, that doesn't just happen. Like, you have to decide. You have to change. And so when I heard that audio back for this podcast, I heard her say all those amazing things. And she was like, and then the pieces fell into place. And I wish she was next to me right now because like, I don't want to hug her. and be like, Tracy, no, you pushed those pieces. You forced those pieces. You worked at those pieces. Like, you did this. And so, you guys, if you heard her story that it took four paychecks to save $100, like, how inspiring is that? So no matter where you are, 
you can start this, you guys. Like, if she can do it, you can do it. But you have to decide. You have to be the one to decide, I'm going to change my life. No one's going to do it for you. Well, I think that's so powerful because I think a big part— You know, I feel doing my job is like I see people, you know, I'll be at a big speaking event with Mm -hmm. thousands of people. And I'm like, I just want to give everyone everything. (laughs) But I I feel like what you just said, though, the sacrifice you made Mm -hmm. to save up, it took Mm -hmm. four paychecks. Mm -hmm. And you remember it. Like it was yesterday. The four, you said four paychecks (laughs) Mm -hmm. to save up the money to change your life Mm -hmm. and do something different. And when you have skin in the game, things start to change a little bit. And I think that that's important that you made the sacrifice to start the sacrifice, if that makes sense. (laughs) Absolutely. So in Financial Peace University, you started to learn to budget. Correct. So talk to me about, like, the first couple of months you started budgeting. Was it, like, perfect? Were there some mess-ups? Like, what what did life (laughs) look like then? So um, our first— I had to find an accountability partner because I'm single. And I sat down and had a budget meeting with him. So, So I mean, I was really doing the things that you have to do. The first budget meeting, he was almost like a principal. He was like, Tracy, what what is this? (laughs) (laughs) You are $10 away from losing everything. And I was like, I know, Travis, I know. And he was like, you have to get another job. I was like, no, I can't get another job because I'm single, and then I can't be walking my dog at night, and all these, Mm. oh, my goodness, every excuse in the book. And finally, he put his foot down, and I was like, okay. And I went out. And I found a part-time job. I had to increase my income. It just would not work for me in what I had because it was such a mess. Yeah. It was such a mess. Yes. I had to do something else. Oh, mm-hmm. Thank God for Travis, right? I, know, I mean, we, we all need you know, Travis in our life. Seriously, though, I'm like, what? And that's huge to say because mm-hmm. we do talk about it. I mean, like, it takes a village to help. Absolutely. And getting people that isn't your shopping buddy, yeah. not your girlfriend oh, yeah. that you lunch with, like, but legitimately someone mm-hmm. that is willing to say to you, yes. what is this? I mean, yes. loving you really well, maybe a little harsh, but but worth it, and that's Absolutely. it. And so, and so you had to get that second job, which I was probably to. a big sacrifice. It so was huge. you're still in that second job, I right? Am. I am. And so that's because you are on baby step two. I am on baby step two. So you're paying off the debt. I am. I have done amazing. I think I've done amazing yeah, for, this past yes. year because I only have two debts left. Okay. So I will Friday be able to pay off my car early. Yes, you I'm did, so Tracy. Excited. Seriously, oh, I'm so excited. Three months early. Yeah, you'll, you'll, yeah. you won't have a car payment. I would not. Have have the car payment anymore. So then you'll only have one debt left? I'll have one debt that's extremely sizable. But the great thing about it is in Financial Peace University, because that debt is so big, I have the tools of really how to get that done in one year. So my goal is this time next calendar year, I'm debt free. Yes. I love okay, so I have people on the show all the time that are just where you are, and I always tell them, come back on the show okay. and tell us what it felt like after your debt-free yeah. screen. And so you're going to be able to get a big raise once you have no payments because that income will come in, and that'll be yours. Absolutely. But do you feel like now that you've been budgeting and that you're intentional with where every dollar is going, obviously you've made incredible progress in so many ways, <laughs> do you feel like you got a raise? Absolutely. Purchasing things without guilt, to me, was a huge raise in itself, too. Mm. It's just been truly mind-blowing and amazing. Wow. Just not even having late fees. Mm. current. <laughs> I mean, yes. is yeah. a raise in itself. For sure. So what categories in your budget? I know you're saying a couple— did you were you able to adjust and be absolutely like, yeah. absolutely um, I am vegan I'm able to do fifty dollars a week and that's the sweet spot yes. I feel really good doing see that, and so. I love that because we talk about all the time that you can eat healthy yeah. while on a budget <laughs> yeah. but that is a priority for you that's mm-hmm. the other thing about budgeting that I love is I'm like it's your budget it's your Correct. life and you get to shape it around not only being wise with money. But around what your lifestyle needs and requires, and one of those for you yeah. is 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 being vegan, right? And so Absolutely. you're able to up your grocery category yes. more because other 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 categories were in control oh, no. and you could lower. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much, Tracy, seriously for coming on, sharing your story, encouraging so many people where they are. I'm I really am so thankful you came on. Thank, thank you. you for having me. I appreciate it. How inspiring is Tracy, you guys? I mean, like, oh, I loved I loved her story. I mean, she. She did the whole thing, like even got Travis as her accountability partner to look at her budget. And so, side note, make sure you have someone in your corner that you can talk about money with because having two brains is so helpful in this. Sometimes you see one thing and someone else sees another perspective and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even see that. 
So being able to just like verbalize it and see it with someone else is huge. And those of you married, obviously your spouse needs to be that. You guys need to be on the same page. But she's killing it, you guys. I mean, I'm so, so stinking proud of her. And I love that she came on the show. So thankful that she shared her story and her encouragement to you guys. And so to check out Financial Peace University, which Tracy mentioned, and Annie's favorite budgeting tool, Every Dollar, and my favorite and Tracy's favorite, make sure to click on the show notes and check that out. All right, you guys, what a fun, fun episode that this was. Now, if you want to watch the video version, you can check that out on YouTube or Facebook or rachelcruz.com. And for this podcast, make sure you subscribe so that these episodes automatically come right to you. And if the spirit leads, you can leave a review if you want. (laughs) But thanks, you guys, so much for listening. And remember, as always, take control of your money and create a life you love.